welcome back. If I were a betting man, I would bet that the most popular question that I've ever seen on the internet on blog sites for guns is, what's the most accurate load for my new gun? It'll be something along that line, whether it be a revolver, a pistol, a bolt-action rifle, or you know, Mini-14, or AR-15, whatever it is. Somebody's going to ask a question relating to the best accurate load, the best load for that particular gun. And of course, he'll be given all kinds of advice by people who have or profess to have the best load for that person. Well, as George Strait once sung, if you can believe that, I've got some oceanfront property in Arizona. There's no such, there's no such animal. Every, every cartridge has got many potential high accuracy loads. And that's the reason why you have so many different powders listed for any given, for any given cartridge. You know, if, if, if there's one particular powder and one particular charge that worked, they'd just simply publish that one. There wouldn't even have to be a whole page of loading data. You could put it all, you could put all the loading data in the world, basically in a, in a small notebook. It doesn't work that way. All your different powders uh, have similar burning rates across the board. You know, you, 48, IMR 4895 has got cousins from other manufacturers that are in the same burning, very, very similar burning uh, rate. Uh, you know, Ball C2 uh, powder has got many powders which have similar burning rates. Uh, bullseye powder has got many powders that have similar burning rates, and it goes on and on and on. So, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to be a slave as you did have to be, say, 40 years ago, to just a few powders that were on the shelf at the store. There are so many powders out there to pick from now, and they all span across very similar burning rates. So, how do you pick a particular powder and establish a good load? Is there a way to do it? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's something I've been doing for over 50 years and very, very successfully. It doesn't take an awful lot of, it doesn't take an awful lot of time and it doesn't take all kinds of ingenuity. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not burning incense and, you know, saying incantations and hoping, you know, that the, the, the you know, powder gods are going to be good to me or anything like that. I just simply pick a powder which is in a given range and I'll show you how to do that and then I work from there. The first thing you need to do is get yourself a good notebook to record, record all your trials and all your successes and errors too. So what I put on it, for instance, is a suggestion. I'll date the page. You know, I might have, I might have a particular uh, lot series that I use, which I established with this 222 Remington Mytica T3. Very accurate rifle. Of course, all 222s can be extremely accurate. And I put in a, a little note as to what my goal was. This was an in incremental retest. This is a test that I had done previously, and I was I was doing a verification test to make sure that this uh, that the results that I obtained before were not flukes. So I listed the cases, bullets, primers, uh, and the powder I used. And then I established an incremental charge, and I worked from there in two-tenths of a grain increments, and I worked up from 22.5, working increasingly, up to 23.3. And then following, following the uh, shooting session uh, at the bench, I recorded the uh, results. So as you can see here, I've got 1.710. Uh, 0.895, then it shrinks again to 0.448, then wow, 0.195. This verified that that particular charge, 23.1 grains in my rifle, I'm not, this is not a recommended load for your rifle because it may not work in your rifle. This powder may not work at all. But it happened to produce a very small group, not even, not even two, not even two tenths of a inch 
0.195 and then it swells back up to 0.497. This is a very stable powder. H322 is not the fastest powder for the 222, but it's one of the most famous bench rest powders that was ever used. It, it, it set bench rest records. And I also do something too that um, I've spoken about before. I loaded up three of each, but then I reserve a fourth one, which is my, I fire that into a composite group. So I fire all those five charges into one composite group, and I came up with less than, a, less than an MOA, 0.905. That means that it's a very, very stable powder. It, it works, it works even, even if the thrown charge, and these were thrown charges, these were not weighed out. But even if the thrown charge was uh, off, it, I know that it's going to give me uh, very satisfying results. So my average in that one I recorded here is 0.749. So this is how I establish, you know, this is what I do in my notes. You can have any system that you want. Then how do you, how do you select from the myriad powders out there for the 222 or the 223 or the 308 or the 6.5 Creedmoor? There's a process that works, and it's, it's very, very easy to determine. I really recommend that you have one of these. This is a very, very useful publication. This, this book, this may be in its third printing. I don't know. This is a second edition, and it, has, it, has, uh, it doesn't have some of the newer powders in it. Uh, I don't think this has CFE-223 in it, for instance. So this, is, this was written uh, before that particular powder came out and a few others since. Uh, but I, I really recommend this book. And the reason I do is, first of all, it's not only loaded with tons of helpful information, including a, a good, a very, very good powder burning chart, which is on uh, this, in this book, it's on page uh, 111, but powder powder burning rate chart, which puts all the powders that are currently listed in this manual in a relative burning order, quickness rate. So that's, that's handy. It's got a lot of information in here on cast bullet data and things too. Uh, if you're loading any lead bullets, it, lists, it always lists lead bullet uh, charges. The most important, I think the most helpful uh, thing about this book is it's non-discriminating. Is, is a lot of loading, a lot of loading books. You know, will just out of the blue, they'll pick certain powders and they happen to list those in their in their pages for uh, given cartridge and bullet weight. Whereas Lee took all the different powder data, the published powder data, and with their with their permission, he republished their data uh, in this in 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 a particular order. So he put it in spreadsheet order. So from the highest velocity descending to the lowest velocity uh, powders that were used in that particular bullet weight. It's very, very helpful to know that because when you list it in that order, the powders that are, this is, this is how you establish a good potential for powder. Take the range of bullet weights in a particular cartridge. For instance, in a 308, Generally speaking, it's from 100 grains to 200 grain bullet weights. That's, that's the operating realm of the 308 Winchester, is 100 grain bullets to 200 grain bullets. Now, I know that you're probably not going to be working with either, either of those two in all likelihood, but understanding which powder appears most across the board from the lowest to the highest weight uh, bullet will give you a very good idea. That's, that's the best indicator of the most versatile powder for that particular cartridge. And it's not going to be just one. There will be more than one. And they're probably going to appear, exclude, usually exclude the top two in that median uh, bullet weight, because the top two are the ones that are on the cusp. They usually, they're usually, very frequently, they're not found elsewhere. They they just work in that particular bullet weight, in that medium uh, bullet weight category. But below that, in the top third, you're going to find powders which are listed throughout the range of bullet weights, from 100 to 200 grain bullets. Those powders stand the best chance of being among your more accurate powders. 
that's how I that's how I landed on IMR forty eight ninety five to try that with my recent uh, load testing with the M one A, because IMR forty eight ninety five is one of those powders that appears in all bullet weights from the lightest to the heaviest. And so therefore, I know that that powder, the, the, power, the power band, the, the burning band of that particular powder, is, it, fits, it fits all scenarios. So it's a highly useful powder, but this is not the only one. There were other powders that also fall into that same category. Varget powder is also uh, a particular uh, powder uh, in that in that uh, cartridge. Um, 4064 IMR 4064 is a very very popular powder in that cartridge. Ball C2 uh, CFE 223. Those are all in the same burning category, and they'll all do very well. Uh, now defunct IMR 4320 is a powder that has gone, since gone off the uh, market, but it's, it's still out there. There's still plenty of people who have it on their shelves. That's another one that uh, has produced good results with it. So you don't have to be a slave to particular powders. Anybody who tells you that only certain powders work and a certain you know charge weights, they don't know what they're talking about. They're, or they're, they're professing information which is totally bogus because nobody could ever possibly know that. Um, even laboratories don't know that. They can they can they can state. They can state what powders, you know, tended to be more uniform in their tests, their tests. It's not your tests, it's their tests with their, with their test barrels and range conditions and all that. I, I get kind of a kick out of this old, this publication here. I don't know when I got this. This is, I think this goes back to the 80s. Um, I don't know when it was published, but um, so their recommendation, this is, this is a Hodgden book, um, number 27. It says, uh, it says uh, it will do well with a host of powders, H380, H335, Ball C2, H4895, and Varget. At that time, they weren't producing IMR powders, so they were listing all their own particular powders more than anything else. Although, in the pages, it did list data for other powders by other manufacturers, which is to their great credit. But I... <laughs> I had to, I had to laugh because the first powder that they listed H380 does not appear in any of the data. So he, they recommended H380, but you're not going to find it in their data. That I found that to be very very funny. But um, even then, when they say which of the powders tended to be the most uniform and the most accurate for them, it simply may not be for you. You may find other powders, Vitivori powders. You may find. Uh, any number of brands, you know, accurate powders. Uh, and no matter what it is, you might find a different brand and a different powder that will work just ducky in your rifle. So that's that's the process by which I narrow down uh, the most useful powders. I also go by what I have on hand too, but I keep a pretty broad stock of powders for the different calibers that I've loaded. But again. Go to the median bullet weight, the 150 grain bullet weight if it's a 308, or if it's, um, you know, whatever caliber it is. Go to the, go to the heaviest bullet and the lightest bullet, and whatever, whatever powder works in the, whatever powders work in the median bullet weight will likely work across the board. So select from that top third. Anything in that top third, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good place to begin. Just roll dice. It doesn't make any difference. If you happen to have a particular powder on hand or if it happens to be a sale on a particular powder at the store, that, that could be as good a powder as any. And it may not be a powder that you'll find listed in any blog sites whatsoever and don't pay any attention to that. Some of the best loads that I've ever had are unheard of loads. They've, they, I've never seen them printed before. So whether it be for handguns or rifles. Now, how you establish what load to, to, to use is very simple. Always take, always take the, uh, the, the maximum charge weight for that particular powder, not for all the powders, but for that particular powder, and round it to the nearest, to the nearest 10 grains and then move the decimal point over and that's your, that's your incremental load. 
So if it's a if it's a 50 grain charge case, if that's if that happens to be the the highest uh, charge load for your particular powder that you're using is 50 grains, it's a half it's a half a grain. It's point five grains, a half a grain. Move the decimal point over. That's all. So it's a 0.5. If it happens to be a 223 size case, you're talking CFE 223 powder. Um, let's see. Well, that one doesn't happen to list, but Varget, for instance. Varget and the 223 list 27.5. And it's a similar it's a similar charge for CFE 223. You're talking about in the 27s. That would be 0.3. You'd work up in three tenths of a grain increments because you're rounding it off to the nearest ten, 10 grains. So 27 rounds off to 30 grains. So that's how you arrive at your incremental your incremental charges. It's it's absolutely foolish to you know to to go up in one or two tenth grain increments, for instance, with a uh, case like a 3006 case, which is it rounds off to about uh, six tenths of a grain. It rounds off to uh, 60 grains. So you're going to be in the realm of about 57 grains, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. You're going to be in that in that 60 range, rounding off. So you work up in six tenths of a grain increments. You don't have to go any finer than that. Once you once you find the load that works within the six six tenths of a grain increments, then if you want, then you can fuss around and see if there's a charge that works, you know, two tenths of a grain above or two tenths of a grain below, and see if see if it can be you know more finely tuned. But you arrive at your initial your initial uh, point of uh, Basically, your, your, your initial uh, charge weight is that which reveals the best load within six tenths of a grain with a 3006, uh, with, with a 223 within three tenths of a grain uh, charge increments, and that's how you establish that. Simply start with the high. What I do is I take the I take the highest listed charge weight and I put that at the bottom. If I'm doing five, if I'm doing five uh, incremental test loads, I just simply start from the bottom and I work up four, three, two, one, listing my loads in decreasing order so that I'm starting when I when I go to the range, I'm starting with the lowest uh, the lowest pressure load and I'm working up to the highest pressure load. And that way there I can see how the load develops, and as you can see, you know, with the with the 223, uh, with the 222 rather, two tenths of a grain. That's a that's a charge weight, which is proportional to that cartridge, because it's 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 like I say, you just move the decimal point over. So always establish your your starting loads that way, and your incremental loads. Don't change any other components when you when you you know doing when you're doing incremental loads. In other words, if if you work if you've got uh, you're working with the last of your CCI primers, don't don't jump to Remington or Winchester primers in the middle of your test because that's going to skew the results. I spoke in depth about primers. Primers uh, th there's not necessarily a big difference between the performance of particular powder. Match grade primers are a higher quality control primer, but they're not necessarily any different than the, than the ones that they have in the same size. So while a, uh, you know, a Benchrest 4 primer uh, is, is a higher price primer and better quality control, it's no, really, <laughs> it's really no, it's really no different in terms of its, its pressure and velocity than the regular a small rifle primer that CCI produces. So, but don't change primers be in that in your sequential test in your incremental test. Benny, yeah, you want to go out and have a cigar pretty soon, I bet you, huh? So, that's about all I have to say. That's how you establish your good loads. And if you work up if you work up an incremental load like that, 
you're almost always going to find a particular load that works very well for that powder. If that powder doesn't happen to give you satisfactory results, move to a different, move to a different powder and try something else. But you're probably going to find, yes, I know, come over here. <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna find a powder which uh, works out for you almost always with the first one or two powders. So that's it. And then once you find once you find the powder that works, he gets so. Let's see what time is it? Oh yeah, it's after three o'clock. So he knows he can tell time. <laughs> after three o'clock, it's it's cigar time. It's a cigar and a scotch. So I know I'll be right with you. He's a great guy. <laughs> Anyway, so that's all I have to say. Select your, get yourself a good, get yourself a good Lee book. This is, this is the best cookbook I know of. I, I got all the other different loading manuals and they, I recommend to have as many as you can. But if you start out with Lee's loading data, uh, the, powder, the powder manufacturer data, you can never go wrong. Um, it's, and you work, you work up things on your own steam. In other words, through your own analysis. The median weight bullet, find a powder that fits in the top third or so of those powders and select from there. I always recommend selecting from the single base extruded powders versus the ball powders if you're looking for the best accuracy, the most consistent accuracy, even if things sh should be a little bit skewed one way or the other. The, the, the weather changes, it gets hot one day, uh, or maybe your powder measure didn't drop exactly the same charge each time. Extruded powders are very, very forgiving in that respect, whereas ball powders tend to be very, very fussy. But they also, they also charge very, very uh, uniformly. So as long as you're not having heat extremes and things like that. I know, well, we're gonna get up there and do that. So that's it. To all my Patreon donors and uh, all the help that I get, thank you so much. God bless you all. Don't forget to subscribe. God bless.